hooked up. Three LIGO batteries underneath. Base runner powering the motor. It's alive. Wow. It might go like a jackrabbit. <laughs> Man, it went up that hill as if it had no idea there was a hill. So as is, the throttle's just really sketchy. I mean, it looks like you could break it off at any moment. We need to build some sort of hinging arm. And I think it'd be better to, better to have like a metal bar. Oh, like the back one over here. It'd like be the brake bar. Yeah, it'd be similar to the brake bar. You could either laser it out of aluminum or something, or you could 3D print the whole thing. But I think if it's 3D printed and this thing takes a, like it topples over, then you risk like breaking yeah. the 3D print. I think laser cutting it out of metal would be a lot better. And I could do like two plates here and here and the connecting piece can be like an aluminum pipe that we just bolt together. How long do you think it's gonna take? Less than an hour. Less than an hour? Less than an hour. Bada bing, bada boom, let's do this. Yeah. I think right there is great. Yeah, yeah. Here? Yeah, yeah. And then I just lean forward a little bit for engagement, lean back. Lean forward, lean back. It pivots along this hole. Yeah. And then down here, we're gonna put a screw through this. Yeah. Now I was thinking of attaching springs or elastics from here. So this is a 3D printed one, I'm guessing? No, uh, there, there's this two aluminum and bars. this is aluminum, and this is aluminum pipe. Yeah, yeah, but bucket load of springs. Have you checked out our spring collection? So generally speaking, what we would want to have is a hard stop. If he's going head over heels and this thing's uh, tumbling on the sidewalk, right. that is going to take the full brunt of an impact. Right. So if that, if the whole board hits that thing. Yeah. That Aaron's work. already splattered on the ground. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. <laughs> I would use that as your stop point. I think your pivot further down, and then you just have metal on metal, and you're not... Like th this thing is a stop point. Yeah. Oh. Why, wouldn't, why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's yeah. an obvious natural thing to take advantage of, so then your pivot should be a fair bit further Lower. down. Oh, the lovely smell of melting plastic, right? Mmm, yeah, I know it. How long is that going to take? About half an hour, an hour? Two and a half hours. No. Two and a half hours? Two and a half hours. Very uh, high density infill because we don't want it cracking. You like it? You like it, Stu? I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. So to install the front throttle, we're gonna have it over here, and when the paddle engages, it'll hit the throttle. Yeah. Let's cut it down. Perfect. So this was a bad design that we came up with. It was not a great way to do it. So now we're just going back to the the handle bob. So this is a good chance to introduce one of our new torque arms in the making. It is a regen torque arm that is two parts and this ratchet system actually bites into the axle so it can counteract any axle wiggle when you're going forwards and when you're in regen. If you only have one torque arm, you can see there's a little bit of play and then when the motor is accelerating and regening, over time, it'll make that wobble worse and worse. However, with this two-piece torque arm, it goes on like that, and this spiral tightens it against each other, and now it can't move at all. Yes, indeed, the Dirt Surfer is ready to go. We're about to take it on the East Gate ride, and I'm very excited. Took a lot of time and effort to get it to the point where it seemingly 
isn't interfering with the wheel. I find it quite sensitive, so we're gonna do a whole video on programming the base runner to uh, have less throttle sensitivity, and also a video on programming this rear drive and the regen there, but overall, it, it came together really well, and we're really happy with it. You ready, Sid? I'm ready. You ready? Okay, smoother. Ooh. Ooh. You all 